Now, um, what we're going to be talking about is case management. What happens whenever you have um, situations where you want to track the details of procedures that happen or anything that was involved with solving a particular issue that is not really related to your maintenance uh, records or to situations where you're where you don't want to keep it under a uh, work order specifically. So what Luis is going to be talking about today is how we can track those, how we can add different different components to it to take a little bit of a specific form in order to document all this and and keep it out of the work orders. Okay, so Luis, whenever you're ready. All right, thank you, Ernesto. So let's look at the last topic that I have for you uh, today. Uh, let's see if we are seeing it, perfect. All right, so we have case management, okay? Uh, basically, if we look at, we have in EAM, right, the agenda for today, for that session is, uh, we're gonna be looking at case management, what it's used for, uh, basic configuration that you can use, and also uh, current scenario, right, in terms of, of what possible is, uh, situation that can be used for, okay? Now, if we look further, right, every, typically, in 4 a.m., everything revolves around the work order, right? If you do some type of work management, then basically you are in need of having uh, a work order set up. And basically everything revolves around that. Now, the, port the, the thing is that not all of the events are have or need that, uh, that sense of having a work order for that, right? For example, uh, if you want to capture accidents, if you want to capture emissions, if you want to capture spills, uh, any government report, right? Any operator nodes, shift nodes, anything like that, right? So what happens that you typically for those type of situations, you don't need an actual work order, right? It doesn't make sense to have that because it's not our work related at that moment that you're capturing that type of information, right? So in that sense, that is why we have case management so that we can use it in many ways so that we can capture all these types of, of events that happen in our different industries. So in such a way that we can digitally have our history of any event, every type of tracking that is happening out there okay with that we can uh, gather data we can have all the information needed assessments for the further future use right if we are looking at having the same situation in near future for something that happened before then right in the system you have all the data, all the entries of that previous situation so that you can be guided for or have an idea of what had happened from that end, okay? That, why, that, is, that is why we have case management, okay? Now, in terms of configuration, again, just like the previous um, session, we have task plans, right? We have task plans, uh, we have checklists, but these are specifically for case management. It can have an approval workflow. Uh, you can associate work orders into it, or you can also create follow-up work orders out of it. Now you have e-records for every type of, of uh, change in terms of status or signature. You have your e-records there to support who is doing this and who is doing that. Now, 
in terms of the scenario, right? So we have an oil spill near a building and we need something to go and track it, right? Uh, basically, if you don't have anything, then basically you're, you have to build up practically everything from the ground in order to capture the data that you need in order to assess the situation, right? So why do we do this? We do this uh, to, to, to assess those factors of the spill, right? Size, type of oil, uh, the resources that we need, right? And then from that, how to monitor the response, right? Uh, what are the, the direct efforts needed for that oil spill, right? Uh, and then from that, follow up, um, do some additional capturing of data in a specific frequency that you determine, right? And with that, you maintain a digital history of everything that has been done against that specific case scenario that happened uh, during at some point, right, uh, to the company or to one of the locations of the company. So how to track it? Well, we use in 4 am okay, because that's, it has this module that help us gather all that out. Okay. So let's go over here and jump into the actual in 4 am And from there, Let's look at the configuration of that um, case management, okay? So let's start with looking at the task plans over here, specifically for the ones that are related to, uh, to case management. So I'm going to look for here and look for one over here. It says case management checklist. So I'm going to set it up. I'm going to put it as a selected. Let's run it. All right. Okay. So typically, task plan, again, very simple uh, configuration, right? It can have a task, a code, a uh, description of the task. You can specify the trade or multiple trades depending on the task plan. Uh, you can specify the amount of hours for that task and the amount of people that are going to be uh, intercalating with that task itself. Okay. Uh, important thing over here is that if it, if it has an active checklist like we wanted to have, then basically you should have this case management checklist set it up also. Just like the other one, it has revision control. So in that sense, basically, if you need to do some reviews of these task plan, then you have the ability to do them and maintain that tracking of the changes as you go on, okay? You can specify the instructions that anything that has been placed in for that task plan, but more importantly, you define that checklist uh, in terms of, of the system, right? So for example, for this task plan, it's asking question, yes or no, right? Is everyone safe? Is there any spill? Yes or no, right? So those are the things that the system will ask you when you start using that task plan in the case management, which we're gonna see in a little, little bit how we associate that into into the actual case, okay? Now, a little bit more about this. Uh, this can be a required entry. It can be also either a checklist item, just like a completed, or you can ask for a quantitative value with its corresponding unit of measurement, or you can ask qualitative uh, value with its corresponding finding. So you have to select all the options or let's say all the possible uh, things that they can be answered for that specific uh, checklist item, okay? You specify that this will be for the header equipment because it's a one-to-one -one relation with what you're uh, dealing with at that moment. 
And basically, you can also follow do the follow-up task plan for that specific case in, in a sense that if you generate a report or generate something out of that task plan, then basically uh, you have everything set up for, for that work order to be generated accordingly. Okay, so that is basically the, the, the basic data, right? The master data that you will need to have at least in a sense, right? Uh, to generate case, right? Again, this is to, to capture data, to capture incidents that had happened in the, in the company, in a location within the company. And uh, definitely you don't want an actual work order to capture that out. You want something else and probably out of that something else, you're going to generate a corresponding work order for it. Okay. So based on that, let's look at more in detail. Uh, what is the type of um, information that you capture in a case itself? Okay. So in order to do that, let's go into operations and let's go to case management screen. Okay, and out of here, we're gonna look for, uh, we're gonna look for 10,005 case. Okay, now for example, this, it has, it will give you an automatic number. You will need to add an associated description into that uh, case management, right? Uh, basically, it will ask you not for all the time, but it could ask you for an equipment, right? So you can, that gives you the flexibility that you can use it for a specific equipment or for something else that is not directly related to an equipment, okay? By selecting the equipment, it's gonna bring out also the department or you can just place it in there, okay? On the type of, of say, on the type of case management, you can define all the different things that you want to keep track or, or let's say investigate, right? For example, in this case, we have hazardous spills or if it's a safety or security issue, right? Uh, basically, we can define as many as we need based, and that will be based on the on the type of industry, on the type of company, right? So it's in a sense, it's uh, it's very flexible on that end. Okay. Also, you can specify a status flow, right? So we can specify a status flow we can identify which roles will need to interact with this type of process. And then based on that interaction, you can give the proper authorizations so that people can move this case forward, right? If it's a very complex organization, probably this would be, uh, this would have some man many iterations within the different people. But if it's a close uh, one, basically, you can definitely have a very simple setup for the status flow, okay? Okay, moving a little bit further, we have, you can specify the location of the case. These are very specific details, right? For example, the type of service goal, the area that is affected, the priority that it has, uh, if it's a regulatory, it doesn't need a follow-up uh, if it's if it deals with hazardous materials. You, you can specify the cost center that it's associated to. Uh, you can also identify right or keep track when it will start, when it commence, right, and, and when it should be finished, right. And then also you can give an overall estimated cost of of the amount of of right of money that it's going to take you to finish up the case and probably uh, correct anything that it's in there okay you can also specify uh, follow-up work orders if you need to interact with the work management side so that they can execute uh, jobs in 
related to this case, then basically you can also uh, associate that out over here. You can specify the description of that work order, the type of work order that you want to come out, out of it, the class, the status, and the priority of it. And if you have a specific task plan for it, also you can define it over here so that it comes with the necessary information. Okay. Now on the tracking details, uh, we specify who requested, when it was requested, uh, this case, uh, the, this incident or this case management, who's a responsible person, who's uh, assigned to and um, with its corresponding email, right? Important that they have an email because the system will generate automatic emails as you start uh, configuring the different tasks for that case, okay? And uh, when it's scheduled to start, when it's scheduled to end, okay? A little bit forward into the task tab, we have the different tasks that we need to be doing for these uh for the for the case itself right uh it's gonna ask you for the actual sequence of that task it's gonna ask you uh if there's an associated checklist into it uh if there's some estimated cost um also a priority into it and then on the tracking details also you specify who's the assigned role who's assigned to Who's the person, right? So that when you generate these tasks, they are going to be sending these uh, emails with the corresponding information into it. Okay. Also, in terms of of scheduling and and duration of it, you can specify a plan duration for that specific task, when it's supposed to be started, when it's supposed to be ended, based on that duration, and then over here. It's a simple way that the people can give you feedback in terms if the dates, the scheduled start date are firm dates, uh, if they're ready to start, if they have already started the whole task, and if they have completed, right? Now, in that sense, they this is something that the, the users will need to give you some feedback, right? So if people need to go into these, uh, into these tasks, and give you that that feedback needed right that update into that now for each task also you can specify a corresponding work order okay um, so if there's some follow-ups then do need an actual work order or any type of service or anything like that then you can put it over here and the system will associate that to the corresponding task in the not in the event log, but in the checklist, we're gonna see that based on the task, for example, the number two over here, safety check, that has a task plan for checklist. So when we look at that checklist, it's gonna bring out the information that they need to fill in, right? In order to, let's say, complete the whole task. So in that sense, for example, they put a yes or no based on the the answer that they want to give, and also they can they also manage who's uh, who performed the actual action and who's reviewing it, right? So people can digitally sign in there uh, for that end. Okay. Now in the event log, you're gonna see uh, changes, right? You're gonna see uh, when an e signature was given for that task. Uh, and also that change in status, okay? So anything that related to that on the event log, it will appear. Also, you have the e-records, which also gives you an overall perspective of everything that you want to keep track of, everything that has been set in the, in the case, who did it, at what time they did it, right? That is basically the, the main setup, or not the setup, but uh, how you create a new one, right? A new case and, and all the information that it's needed, right? So let's look for this case, oil spill near main building, right? So we have already set up, it's related to a tank uh, near the main building. Currently it's open. We can sign in from here. 
uh, the different people that need to sign in or sign off on that specific case. Uh, gives a location, uh, Costco, it has an estimated cost of 300,000 related to hazardous material, right? There's no follow-up work order on that sense, okay? Now, if we move forward into the different tasks that they have been set, over here, you're gonna see that it has sequence, but it also has a step, right? So within sequence one, we can have multiple steps, and each of these become an actual task that can be set for different person, right? For example, the first one is to Ernesto, the, the last one's to Juan, right? Gives us uh, an overall when it's gonna be started, the, um, the duration, and if it's ready to start, for example, he said that it's gonna be uh, starting today, but there's no there's no feedback yet that he has started, right? So the idea is that when he enters, he updates it and updates that information, and that gives us some an overall perspective where we add which which all of these tasks. Okay. So for example. I have over here the task plan for the accident uh, assigned to a person. They already started and they should be finished around five days. Uh, there is an actual checklist associated to that, so, right? So in that sense, the, the checklist based on that sequence will bring out the different uh, things that they need to capture. In this case, it's a yes or no answer. But again, it can be a completed one, it can be a, a value, it can be a, a qualitative uh, finding out of it. Okay. Now, one of the important things about having that case that you delegate, right? You have assigned a person to each of these tasks. So the idea is that when that person signs in, uh, they go into the corresponding uh, Screen and they see their task, okay? So for example, I'm gonna sign off quickly and I'm gonna sign in as another user. And this user, uh, apologies, he's a Spanish speaking person. So you're gonna see everything in Spanish, but we're gonna go into the task itself, right? So when you when he looks at his registry, he's gonna see the task that he needs to be doing for that specific case management. So over here, he's gonna add all the documents, he's gonna add, go through that uh, checklist, update it accordingly, and give us feedback of when or what he's doing currently to that specific task that he's assigned to. Okay. I'm gonna go back into the English speaking world. So let's uh, enter over here and then just show you um, basically the same screen, right? That he would be using. So I'm gonna enter over here through the case management task. And I'm gonna select the one that he was looking at. So over here I have, I can see everything or I can see what it's uh, specifically for me, right? In this case, I'm seeing uh, that, that the task that he's going to be doing and what he's going to be filling out is all this information, okay? Once that task, all the tasks of the case are completed, then basically the final person, the reviewer, who's in charge, of that case management will close it up completely, right? And then at that end, uh, the case is closed in sort of way, right? But you have everything documented within one single screen with all the information that you need. If you need to further revise it in the future, you have everything captured right on one single space and that's basically case management uh, module that InfoEAM has uh, available awesome Luis uh, 
Um, yeah. So is there any way, or um, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, this is part of EAM, right? Yes, this is a basic uh, part of the basic configuration, basic modules of EAM. Uh, you're gonna find it on the operations tab, basically in the case management, case management task. It's it's right in there. You don't need anything else into it. Thank you very much. Let's see if there's any other questions. Okay, I have another question, Luis. Um, is there any way to document the process of a job performed for a specific case? Yeah, basically, like like you're so you're looking at, for example, on the work management side, right? And how we can document anything that's been executed out there. Uh, for example, an external job or an external person giving a service, right? Well, out of that case, you can definitely create follow-up work orders, right? When you do that, that information gets tightly integrated between that work order and the actual case. Everything gets pinpointed, everything that gets executed, or you're gonna see it right in the actual work order because it's directly linked. So that way you can document anything that is done outside or anything that it's done and you need a form of a work order to, to do that. Gotcha. I have another question here. Um, so can you give examples of where this has been used or applied? Well, basically, uh, for example, the case management is very flexible. Uh, we have used it for auditing purposes. Uh, we have also engaged in terms of of having like an uh, like an incident uh, management side in order to register any type of incident in the in a facility and all that. Uh, any just like we do this, uh, they can be uh, for the HSSE uh, people. They can use this in many ways so that they can capture the different documents that they have things that are occurring in a facility. Uh, they can probably use this and configure in a such a way that they can that they have the options to to manage that out, right? So imagine that this uh, model of case management can be very flexible, so that you can incorporate, for example, other things into the EAM environment. Uh, we have used it for management of change right and track that management of change so that is one of the things that we have used it before and it's very good it's very tightly integrated again with the work management which gives you that directly with the execution of the jobs okay you said you said auditing purposes um yeah i know there's a lot of people here that probably get audited all the time so can you, would you care to expand on that Right, so for example, um, let's say that you audit permits or you audit uh, jobs or you have a general audit uh, system that you need to put into it in place in order to assess, for example, uh, how my procurement is doing, right? Are they are uh, being uh, having the three uh, companies to for the quoting process, right? Or they're using only one. So in such a way, you can create a task with the corresponding checklist so that you can go assess, for example, one or many uh, POs, look at them and then audit them and say, yeah, this is this is following the, the procedure. No, this is not following. And then you can get an overall view of if you are complying with your policies or not, right? But how to capture the, the data? Well, you can use case management for that sense. Perfect. So folks, that is all for today. Luis, thank you very much for all your information. You're the man. And thank you. what we're talking about today is different ways to use EAM. And of course, there's a lot more to be seen. So make sure you contact us with any questions or any information that you would like to get from us. Um, 
again, where we have our website, visualk.com, and you can send us an email to any of the part of the team members that you already have contact with, or you can also have uh, uh, send an email at information at visualk.com. Okay, and on behalf of all of Visual K, we want to thank you for for experiencing this challenge with us. Of course, we are all very worried about what the current situation and we thought it was the best option to, to keep everyone safe. So thank you for living this experience with us and I hope we can keep working together and, and get all the, all the maintenance relations that you need. Okay, so thank you very much, and that's it for today.